Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this new edition of Sotorial Talks today in our living room in Bourgogne, France with my beautiful wife Sonia Glynn. Hello darling, Hello. how do you do? Great, I think so far. How are you? I'm very excited today because, um, first of all, a, a lot of people have been appreciating the fact that we were restarting some series together. So it was a good mm -hmm. surprise for us because right. those videos worked very well and people were really asking to do more together. So here we are. We're going to try to do two today. And that was very heartwarming and I appreciate it. I'm sorry? It was very heartwarming. To yeah, hear, absolutely. So nice. And so we're going to do two episodes today, uh, not, not broadcasted the same day, but we're going to try to record two. And the first one, I take the lead and I want to address a very important topic uh, mm -hmm. for me, for my heart and for my soul is the topic is uh, being a gentleman in 2024. So behind this title, being a gentleman in 2024, uh, there's a question. Is it still possible to be a gentleman in 2024? Well, there's so many dynamics that are different now compared to even just 10 years ago. Exactly. But there's a lot of things that are the same, too. Exactly. And the second thing that is hidden behind this title is that, that we live in a world where the words are challenged. That's right. You know, We try to rewrite some literature from the past for different kind of reasons and all the words in which there's the suffix man in it I have a tendency to be challenged or uh, so I just said to myself well before maybe this was going to disappear from our language it will not disappear from my language uh, not from our job neither because I remind you that our blog is called Parisian Gentleman our first book Parisian Gentleman our second book Italian Gentleman but this one means a, a lot to me so I said for, for the sake of posterity we're going to do a show on that and try to dissect what we feel what it means in 2024 to be a gentleman. Are you game on that? I am. I'm not used to you leading these these discussions, so I'm, it's kind of fun for me to be able to sit back and, and see where you're going with it. Is it comfortable? It's, it's very comfortable so far. We'll okay. see. So, let's go. The first point I want to I wanna stress is that I've been browsing the internet uh, these last two days when I was preparing this show, and I was very surprised, for example, specifically in some um, uh, American blogs or bloggers or American YouTube channels. You know, American, you like tips. Everything is about tips. 10 tips to do this, 50 tips to do that. And I stumbled upon an article like 51 tips to be a gentleman. Mm -hmm. Well, my first reaction is that, unfortunately, I have bad news for you people. You can't have a tip to become a gentleman because in my idea, Becoming a gentleman or acting like a gentleman or having this inside of you, it's a lifelong learning process. You can improvise yourself. It's not a cooking recipe, right? It's something that is really deep inside of you. So we're not going to speak about tips, but we're going to browse a few proposals. I have a few proposals for you. Actually, I don't know, seven, eight, but maybe ten. I don't like to, to give the exact number because I'm French after all. So I have a few proposals. So I'm going to propose um, some ideas to you and you're going to react. Is all that right, a good let's game? Go. Let's go, yes. Okay. So my first proposal is uh, the first step to uh, have this idea of being a gentleman is to realize that there are people around you. Hmm. That is to say that you are not the, the center of the universe, the me, myself, I society in which we live. And sometimes it's a good discovery. It's like a eureka moment to say, hey, there are people around me. It's a very good point. You know, a lot of people, they will have a, a social anxiety and they're not actually trying to be selfish mm -hmm. when they're out in the world and they're f totally inwardly focusing on themselves and not others there's actually almost like a nervosity present so it's easy to forget to think about other people yes but it can actually help those people who feel that nervosity if they start to get outside their own head and wondering about if there's something wrong or they need to be aware of how they're what they're saying and how they look and start projecting over to other people. So I think mm. it's sort of a solution to a problem. But there are also people who are very self-centered and who only want to speak about themselves and yes. who only want to project out what they're thinking and who only want to impress others. So it's almost a dichotomy that we're dealing with there. But you're right. Focusing on other people is a big step forward if it's you're even aiming to be a gentleman. Darling. What I say is that realizing 
that there are people around you. Oh, because just some an people awareness. Do forget. Yeah, it's just aware, being okay. aware that you're not the center of the world. And when I say that there are people around you, I'm not talking there are people through the screen of your uh, iPhone or mm. the friends through some social media. There are real people around you. And okay. I think this is the first step. And it's, it may sound basic to you. So just an awareness. So what do you mean? Like if you're walking into a room and there's maybe seven or eight other people, what yes. do you mean an awareness? What well, just being aware that these people have a way to behave and not immediately try to catch the light on yourself and Im not immediately try to impress people neither. It's something that realize that there are people around you and that mm. you're not a me, myself, I. This is a mm. very strange thing for me. This civilization has become so self-centered that uh, uh, even the algorithm are inviting you only to be in your own bubble. And I think it's a very good thing. So that's, you know what, that can become a habit to, to totally be into your own mind and be that cerebral no, person. And I think it is. every one of us can become aware. It's not that hard to look around and see who's around you. It's a good point. Exactly. The, the second proposal, because you're going to see there's a progression in everything okay. I say. So the first thing is just be aware. And that's a big step for many people. It's a big step. I say, oh, specifically the young generation in the US, e even more. Second proposal, try, try at least one or two times a day to put people first. That's not easy because it's extremely complicated. Once again, we are in this civilization where every single advertisement, it's about being yourself, believe in yourself, Trust yourself. You never hear. You never hear on TV others. It's always yourself, 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 yourself. So it's something that is very simple, maybe simplistic, but it's very hard to achieve. To put people first, at least to try to put people first. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think you know. A, a lot of times we are not resisting putting people first, but. We're trying to think about what we're going to say next, maybe because we don't feel fluent right. and able to just come back mm -hmm. with a response when mm -hmm. someone's speaking. So I think it takes practice to really listen to somebody and then to naturally respond because there's a little bit of a panic that can set in. Like if I don't prepare what I'm going to say next, I'm just going to be left stumped. Yeah, because that's the dynamic to impress. A little bit. Or just to make the other person feel comfortable too, because if you sit there in silence after they speak, they mm -hmm. think you're not even interested. But when I say, darling, put people first, I mean not only in discussion, in life. For give some examples, first. though. Give some examples. What I mean uh, is there's a situation in life, and I don't know, you, you, you arrive at the same time uh, at a cashier, mm -hmm. and then you just say to the person, go ahead of mm -hmm. me. And That's bullying people do first. This. You do well, this. I do this now. Yes. You knew me at a time. I was <laughs> when you not wanted doing to be first this. in line. That's yes, true. Yes, exactly. True. So progressed. I progressed. You, you know, did. I can confess that. I was absolutely not like that. I would do anything but possible that's to so cut the line. French. Just it's very French and Italian. Yes. And in America, you, you have. But that's just a small example. But if you try to, 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 to have example in every situation of mm. life, mm -hmm. this is a very interesting attitude. So for me, uh, being a gentleman starts with these two simple things. Being aware that there are people around you, that you're not the center of the universe. You have the right to be the center of your universe, mm -hmm. but you're not the center of the universe. So when other people put you first, it's really quite impressive. And I remember yeah. being in Italy at a, a train station yes. in Milan. Yes. And there was a man there, and you were really confused about how to purchase your... Um, train ticket yes. and he was basically in front of you and perceiving that you were having some problems so he offered for you to step in front of him yes and to help you yeah yeah absolutely. for just the ticket and that was it was just like <sighs> exactly it you was see like that? a gift it was like a gift yeah. so ladies and gentlemen try this kind of thing because yes. when somebody is doing this to you you feel so good uh, yesterday i was at a supermarket and there was a woman with the as a kid mm. And I just, I just said, okay, just go in front of me because the kid was crying. Mm. And it was like she, that was she like was a miraculous a moment for her, you know? So oh, try well, to I do like the that. same. You can create small miracles. Exactly. And I remember one, a woman who, um, I was a Muslim woman, when we got off the, the train yes. and, and I had lost my suitcase. I remember suitcase, very well. She 
sat, stood there and said, I'm going to wait with you and yes. see if he finds your suitcase or not. Exactly. And I'm like, that was so kind. Yeah. I mean, and, she and just... And you remember it 10 years I, after. I remember, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's been Actually, years. Actually, it was six or seven yeah, years. Yeah, it's I, been years. And yeah. I still remember while you were in searching for my suitcase, she was standing there with me just yes. to give me that emotional support. Yes. And I was, yeah, it's very emotional now to remember exactly. that. Very kind. And you don't forget that. No, you do not forget you see, kindness like that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about big things. It's just little things. Mm -hmm. But try a few times a day to put people first. And that's for me the second step yes. to have this gentleman attitude globally mm. in mm. your universe. Third proposal, acquire manners, but tr try to acquire manners until you master them effortlessly. That is to say manners, when you have manners, but you show, you know, you, you're struggling with your effort, but try to be effortless in the way you really have manners. Because the problem is that manners are disappearing more and more, unfortunately, and I think this is the direct uh, um, product for me of the screens and the social network where people has to be more and more violent and outrageous in order mm. to be noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so manners are very important, but you have to practice them in order to acquire them so that you don't have mm. to think. Mm. So it's just second nature. Exactly. And uh, so, of course, these are basic stuff. Huh? Uh, let the woman go first. Uh, I don't know. Um, don't sit at a, at a table uh, before uh, everybody arrives. And you can review how to have uh, good know. conversations. For exactly. A lot of we those. did a yes. fantastic. Um, right. Well, I mean, a fantastic. I don't say we are fantastic, <laughs> but it was a great uh, show about a book that is mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, how Martin, to have great right. conversation and little tips. So you will have you will find on the internet hundreds and hundreds of resources on little things like that. My advice is that don't do this mechanically. People will always prefer if you make a few mistakes that if you remain effortless mm. and natural. You know, manners as not stiff, in my opinion. So can you just make it more concrete? So you're saying practice matters. Can you think of anything that you've done and then you've practiced and become oh, better yeah. at? Very simple things. For example, when um, somebody arrived at a table, a woman arrived at a table because she went uh, to the toilets in a restaurant and then she's coming back, you stand up. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Yes. And it is so remarkable that, you know, this is very simple, but if you, if you do it mechanically, say to you, you lose your thing and you want to stand up and you, you, you break your glass or whatever, you know, this is what I mean. Being fluid. You okay. know, that's what I mean with manners. So mm. learn manners until you acquire them effortlessly. And even if you are a little bit, um, it's a little bit difficult and counterintuitive, try to make this intuitive. But I'm yes. thinking of a book called Rules of Civility. I will we'll put that up. It's got a, okay, he goes to extreme with a hundreds of different uh, recommendations. But yes. maybe someone wants to What's look over. What's the name over. of this book? I think it's Rules of Civility. I'll, yeah. I'll oh, put I saw it, like, it in our yeah. house. Yes, yes. Ah, it's a book that you have since a long time. If you time. want to like, jog your memory with, with different types of things, you might try to be fluid, like you, okay. as you suggest. The fourth proposal I have, and I'm not sure it's going to be easy, specifically for American people to understand that. It's... When you cultivate yourself, you acquire knowledge about anything, literature, philosophy, whatever, you know, music. Um, do it to, in, the, um, in the idea of later sharing with others and not in the idea of impressing or humiliating others. Mm. I've seen a lot of people that are very cultivated, for example, in philosophy, and instead of, sh this is the attitude of a gentleman, you want to share this knowledge with mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. instead of saying, make them feel that you know more than them. You get Maybe this the question is, before you share, ask yourself, what's my motive? Yes. Is my motive to let people know that I am accomplished, yes. so they respect me more, which mm -hmm. is sort of more egocentric? It is. And selfish, but we all have done that before. Of course. Or is my motive to make something bigger and more um, beautiful in the com conversation and maybe share knowledge that someone else actually enjoys knowing and learning. Yes, but my point is that, uh, it's exactly, I agree with you, my point is that cultivating oneself should be in the idea of elevating yourself mm. and elevating others That's and not humiliating others. That's, That's what interesting I say. because you're, you're going back to why you're cultivating yourself. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're reading a book or listening to a, a, a composition, you, you do it with the intention 
to not just keep it for yourself, mm-hmm. but maybe to also give that uh, knowledge well, or uh, information to others if they want to receive not, it. Well, I, not really. I don't. Uh, I don't have an intention when I cultivate you myself. Don't. But okay. I say, okay. when you are cultivated and you are in a situation mm-hmm. when your 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 culture can be. Uh, I mean, is addressed in a conversation. Okay. Don't humiliate the others. Don't impress others. Right. Okay. This is something which is for me at I the heart it. of being a gentleman. That's nice. That is, yeah. don't basically don't brag about mm. your culture. Just mm. share your culture with others. Mm. And because you will be very happy if you learn something from other people in any time okay. of life. Another proposal. Try to merge the inside and the outside. Now, now we come back to the sutorial world. That is to say... Um, uh, no, I don't. I don't uh, invite people to oh, everybody to wear a suit and ties and etc. But this idea is, is that uh, maybe sometime you can make an effort to merge the inside and the outside. Mm-hmm. That is to say, to merge the the beauty and the goodness. What do you think about this idea of merging beauty and goodness? You know, in French we say la beauté et la bonté. It's funny because it's all also, it sounds the same, but it's not exactly the same word. Mm. Beauté is beauty. Yes. Et bonté is to be a good person, bonté. That is mm. to say the beauty, the outside, and bonté, the inside. The beauty of your right. inside. I understand. And this is something that we are in the tutorial idea, we try to merge those two things. And it, it's the whole um, axiom of Carl Jung, where you merge the outside with inside to create the persona. Mm -hmm. So it's very relevant in our field because we're talking about dressing ourselves elegantly. So if you dress yourself elegantly and you can also bring an elegance factor to who you are internally, you got the whole package. Exactly, exactly. So I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, because with my wife, we like to wander into some concepts and idea we are speaking about being a gentleman in 2024 and i think we addressed maybe it's not in right order but we prefer it like that to let our spirit wander and try to decipher what really makes a difference but i think we are touching very important point the next proposal i have for you it might be one of the most important not the most important because i keep the most important in my opinion for the for the end of this show of course but this sixth proposal i really like it try every day to be in your attitude and your behaviors to be sometimes non-transactional. That is to say, not every relationship uh, in your day are transactional. That is to say, you're not only interested in what the other person or the person you interact with uh, will give you in return. This is something very important. And I think it might be the alpha and the omega of being a gentleman. Not that's everything right. in the world, ladies and gentlemen, is transactional. What do you yeah, think I about that? I think that's that? a really, it's a profound thing to say. And, and, and I believe even in our day and time of social media, mm-hmm. even looking at certain people's profile and, and exchanging a message or comment, it's almost like people do that if they think somehow they're going to get something back. Exactly. And, and Sometimes I think you should really just act from your heart, yes. you know, and, and not expect something in return and really get to this point to where you really enjoy giving. Exactly. Like, like it satisfies you to give. Mm. And, and it's not all about what's in it for me. Yes. And I think that's one of the more profound points that you made. Of my list for yes, the moment? Yes. Is yes. There, that's profound. That's that's life altering. It is life altering. When you get joy out mm-hmm. of really giving and seeing someone change for the better and, and they feel like somehow you played a little part yeah. in that change and, and it's just it's very um, gratifying. Yeah. And what is strange and at the same time what is a little bit scary just, is that uh, when I try to do this and mm-hmm. I do you, you understand, ladies and gentlemen, I don't say I do it all the time. I try to do it mm-hmm. as much as I can. When you do these two people, they are suspicious. They yes, say, that's What does true. he want in return for, for, mm. to help yeah. me? Mm-hmm. They, it it triggers suspicion. It does. Which, it is, does. which is a pity. And, and it's interesting because if you get to like so, so much joy out of helping people, you can almost, it becomes transactional because yes. you're getting something back. But it's getting to that point to where you can literally let go of ego and selfishness. And not if maybe they don't listen to anything you're saying. Maybe they don't care. And maybe you annoyed them. And, and you have to, there's a fine line between going, you know, between 
being balanced and going too far. Yeah. But just not expecting something in return means that you may not get anything in return, and that's fine. It's fine. Yeah. This is maybe, so I'm happy because my wife, out of my six or seven proposals so far, she, you like this one, I right? I do, I like and this And I one think one. it's at the heart of the mm -hmm. idea I have of a gentleman. Okay, next proposal. You're going to like this one, darling, because we discussed this so many times together. Have memory. Mm. Remember. Mm. We live in a society, it's, everything is going so fast that people, they fail to remember. I gave you an example. Me, I, remember, I remember very well when I was a young professional, a freelancer in the production area, I had no work. And I was trying to, you know, I went in Paris, I was coming from, from the countryside, and I went in Paris and I wanted to work. But there was no work because everybody said to me, uh, what did you do before? Uh, well, I did a lot of things, but I had no experience. And then one person helped me. And I still remember exactly, mm. it was a woman and she helped me. She gave me the first contact and she recommended me and I started my career like that. Now what I do when I mean by having memory or remember is that I try to do the same with younger people. I try to give a chance to uh, our, for example, our team, the average age is 24 these days. This is crazy, right? I think yeah. we have, yeah, Leon is 23, very Agathe young. is 24, oh, Louis is 26. So it's a very young, and I like this idea because I remember, uh, I would say 40 years ago, mm -hmm. somebody helped me. And it, this is you know, very important this to is remember. A, profound cultural thing to do in different cultures they you know they place different um, values on remembrance yes so if you try to do something very simple at the end of your day just to recap yes what you did during your day and if you find yourself waiting in a line for example start recapping you know don't just like look at your phone and 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 just really block the world out just start recapping what did i do today what did i do yesterday what happened 20 or 30 years ago if you're that age, if yes. you're old enough to remember <laughs> 20 or 30 years ago <laughs> yeah. that that made a difference in my life and i think for the downtime and dead time to to re start recapping mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of changes in your life exactly and and, and you'll remember names better too because yes. you're 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 tuning your memory into to the practice mm -hmm. of remembrance and i think that that's a very underestimated quality in and on all top of, of that i give you you remember okay i know you're gonna say you told me this example 25 times but i can't help i can't I, th I think i didn't tell this or I, if i did i'm sorry but i love this example because if we connect remember with how to be a gentleman or how to be a gentleman in 2024 yes. i got this very funny story of the pen of the toyota oh, yes, ceo yeah. okay i have a friend uh, I didn't see him since a long time, for a long time. He's called Philippe Bloch, very famous writer in France. And one day, uh, he was a, a business speaker, very famous writer and speaker. And one day he met the CEO of Toyota in Japan. And he wanted to give something because in Japan you have to give a little present to mm. people. It's just the, the way it works. So he, gave, he said, I gave him a poor pen with my, mm. the name of my book on it, like a, probably a 20 cents pen. I just gave it to him. I was a little bit ashamed <laughs> because it was a little piece of nothing, really. And then the story goes like that. Uh, this uh, CEO of Toyota was a real gentleman, Japanese gentleman, mm. extremely educated, refined, nice person. Ten years later, they meet again. They had an appointment, and uh, he knows that he's going to see this person from Toyota ten years after. And then guess what? The gentleman enters, and they had to sign some kind of paper to get contract, and he pulled off of his jacket 10 years after this same exact pen. same pen. This is a very strong <sighs> indicator of a gentleman. And it, so many times... It goosebumps, yeah, you know, because... I, it does, yes. And so many times, um, I can say that we try, if we visit an artisan, to at least wear yes. something. If we have, have it exactly. that that artisan crafted yes. for us. Um, if someone gives us a gift, yes. um, say candles, yes. if that person comes to our home, we will burn, if, 
if we still have them, those same candles. Yes. This is a very good indicator of something a gentleman would do, and I love it. Exactly. And that's a very profound thing. And I r always remember this story mm -hmm. because the conclusion of his speech when he was telling this story to other people is say, it's not about the cost, the value. Mm -hmm. We come back to not impressing. It was just a poor pen, mm -hmm. simple pen. Mm -hmm. But this gentleman made sure that he will keep this pen and then the next time he will see my friend years after he will pull up this very pen and my friend lovely. said i never forget that that's, that's for me mm -hmm. the epitome of gentleman manners mm -hmm. uh the one before last one of my favorite i've been we've been discussing many many times together but i want to re-put this on the table because this is something that might be very interesting for specifically for the young generation for me Let's, so you have the gentleman idea and we have this link to elegance, okay? Elegance and gentleman goes together. And for me, the summit of elegance is the ability to put people at ease around you. And yeah, this is that. something that it took me 15 years to come up with this definition. And I can tell, I've been reading this in different books, but I, w I was, I don't say I was the one who said that, but I came up with this definition and I was very pleased with that because I think that if you put not if you don't put people at ease around you, that's not very gentlemanly. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? Well, I think that it's definitely a gift to be able to put other people at ease. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the only way to do it is just to let go of your own thoughts of your own self. Mm -hmm. And each person may require something different. To feel at ease. Yes. Some people like it when you're really speaking to them and they don't have to think about talking yeah. and they're just like, oh, yeah, this is relaxing. Other people, they're very put off by all the speaking and it's just too much. It's overwhelming. It's a sensory overload and you need to be quiet a little. So each person requires something different. Mm -hmm. it's, you can't put people at ease by using the same method of every single time. Yeah. You have to really perceive exactly what's this person's personality, yes. what does he or she need. It's not that difficult to perceive you can feel a little bit when you are progressing on that on that track mm. you you enter a room and you see i know uh, this guy doesn't need the same thing that this woman or this person you understand and yes. so it's just being it's it's coming back to our first point being aware of the people around you right you, oh, you know that's very good and, and in order to put someone at ease you have to understand cues and i'm thinking about uh, a certain short story by james joyce in 1914 uh, entitled Clay. It was from a collection of short stories, I think, mm -hmm. called Dubliners. And it's about this man and this woman who are on, I believe, a tram, not a train. I think they're on a tram together. But this woman is the whole... A tram, you mean a vegan, a tramway? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like in, in Milan. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So the the woman is a, sort of a spencer. I mean, she has been... I mean, she was an old maid, for example, but she's only... I think in her 30s, mm -hmm. but she's always taken care of her own family. So she never had time to really marry, you know, in her life. So she was doing like very menial work and invisible to everyone around her. Well, she had gone shopping, I think, for some gifts and she had um, some patisserie items and, and some other items in her hand. She got on the tram and she was invisible and she there was no seats. And so she's holding all these items, and it's very awkward yes, when you're in course. motion. Yeah. And this one older man that she called the older gentleman, he did notice her, and he stood up. He gave her his seat, and she was very pleased and feeling great and, and happy that she was noticed and taken care of. But then he started to speak a lot, and she suddenly starts to feel, she's really happy at first, but then she starts to feel nervosity and it becomes too much. And she ends up forgetting her cake, oh, wow. you know, and, and she doesn't have the gift later. And so this older gentleman, who was a military background, so you would think, okay, you're safe with this person. But no, he would think he had just carried it a little too far and actually had the opposite effect. Mm. He wasn't reading cues. Yes. And so to put other people at ease, you have to see their reactions, mm. understand how they're responding. You see a smile mm -hmm. or you see, oh, you know, yeah. like releasing a sigh. It's all nice. But then if you see tense, mm -hmm. a tense um what do we, what would you say ambiance about that person yeah. or you see them looking away you you have to read those cues to know what's putting them at ease and what's making them yeah. more nervous but i think it has a lot to do with experience and intuition at one moment when you start to be aware of the people around you you 
can perceive what is what make them feel at ease mm -hmm. it's it's something that we human we should all cultivate because this is the uh, a very good quality and the last of all and i think when i'm going to say this you will have immediately an example in your mind that we've been living together and we still speak about it years after is i think and it is encapsulates all the rest for me in this one sentence be a blessing for others mm, i love it you, you right mm, and this it. is for me it's it recap it's a recap of everything mm. we said because we said realize that there are people around you second we said uh, try to put people first even if it's not easy then we said try to acquire manners but effortlessly without mm. showing people that you have manners just you have manners uh, naturally and then fourth try to merge the inside and the outside in the way you dress in the way you present yourself also in your attitude and behavior the fifth one try to share the culture you have to not to impress or humiliate people but to share with people and make them benefit of your knowledge the sixth we said create non transactional relationship don't try to be try to not be transactional in everything you do you'll see it's magical then the one next that i love it's remember have memory mm -hmm. always remember mm. people who helped you maybe you can give back not to them but to others in your life so remembrance is very important put people at ease is the last we just discussed and finally what if you put all this together it, it it's in one sentence be a blessing for others or try to be a blessing for others as much as you can my wife has one example that we live together oh, you remember this is a very do. example mm -hmm. tell it please baby all right it's well, our friend kevin he yeah. will mm, recognize himself yeah, Ke kevin um knox actually yeah. in atlanta um needed to, needed a car because his car was in for repair mm -hmm. i think his wife had had a minor accident and so we offered our car. Mm -hmm. I think we were traveling and we weren't there anyway. So we're like, how about Audi and, and, well, and use it? Well, I think actually the, the, the genesis of this story is that we, we wanted to leave our car at his place for parking cost reason because we were going to LA and it was, it was easier right. for You're us right. to leave our You're car right. there. And so then the opportunity came up yeah. for them to use the car because of this accident. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it's, it's fine. So mm -hmm. they did, but what we didn't know we would discover when we returned yeah. is that he had detailed the car, yeah, which hours. had been sitting by, you know, when we were in Europe, it's sitting there and gathering dust and other things. Mm -hmm. And he had detailed it for hours and hours. And it was spectacular mm. to step inside that car and feel that freshness and just know all the care he took yeah. to do we, this We couldn't us. believe our eyes. Well, no, we could not believe it. I said, what, are you, what did you do that? I mean, this is crazy. It's not, we're not talking about a guy who has all the time in the world. He's a very no, active very businessman. very successful. He's a very successful yeah. businessman. Yes. He has meetings things all day long is works t and hours, and hours, and hours and yeah, yeah it's crazy. fantastic and then the guy will realize the number of hours he put as an effort mm -hmm. to clean our car yes and you see it's something very very simple at the same time it's not a revolution of the world but this we tell this story to people i don't know almost every week and i guess we will never forget it and we use it as an inspiration but what's going to be required if you yeah. want to be a blessing to other people is time yes i mean if you're gonna you gotta maybe go pick someone at the, up at the airport it might take you all day long to yes. do it yes but you do it to honor them yes and, and you're not and transactional it's, and it's not transactional you don't expect anything in return but that is going to require a real life shift in the way we think mm -hmm. and a release of selfishness because time is probably the most valuable thing we have you cannot buy one minute of time with mm. all the money in the world. Yes. So if you give someone your time like that, mm. that is a real statement. And by the way, what is interesting in that all this is, um, uh, it's a lifelong uh, progress. It's a lifelong yeah. process. Right. And this is why, forget about tips to be a gentleman. We're not talking about tips here. We're talking about profound feeling that it takes time to progress uh, mm. along these lines. Mm. And me, I discovered about time that you just told us that of course time is the most precious thing that I have this false belief that for example um, taking care of the house or uh, for example uh, us we have uh, two times a day we eat at a table together it's a very simple thing 
and you can have you could have the belief that uh, oh, we are losing time because I could do business you know I could do this I can I can send some mails and do some business and blah 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 no us we decided well, since we are together actually uh, that we're going to eat twice at a table per day and this is the most fantastic yeah. time and That's you realize this, this rituals like can, establishing rituals is yeah, another trait of a gentleman and dedicate time to that that's right and so dedicate time to others this is something very may important. ask you a question y yes of course so if someone's watching this and they could ask you tell me why i would want to be a gentleman why mm -hmm. what would you say well i think that um it adds beauty and greatness and goodness to your existence because, um, well, I can go to the bottom of the subject. We've seen people who have, are very successful, with a lot of money, have everything they, they, they want. And when they achieve that, you have two personalities possible. The person who doesn't listen to others because he's so successful, he listens only to himself, and who is um, OT and... Uh, humiliating others, even indirectly, mm. just by being who he is. Mm. And then you have, and we witness this with really high level people, the reverse attitude, the people simple, caring, listening to others, etc. I think that being a gentleman is the last thing we have as human to make a difference in the world. Why? Because with the social networks, with the artificial intelligence coming, everything is becoming so mechanical, everything is becoming so immediate, everything is becoming so algorithmic that you, how do you express yourself? Mm. How can you try to, to really make a difference in your life and in people's life? Just this is for me, having this behavior is a treasure. And this is why I'm happy that we dedicated uh, this show to this. What is? Uh, what do you think? What would you answer to this question yourself? Oh, well, I didn't expect you to put no? it back on me. Yeah, well. it's a non-transactional question, my love. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah. What if I? Well, if normally say, what, I'm not. What, what I'm not left without words because I really want to pause and and think about the answer. So, mm -hmm. to me, um, I just believe that if someone feels like they want to put the effort into being a gentleman, yes. that I feel like. It's cliche, but I feel like it could change the world. Yes. I think just having a caring attitude is going to not only change people around you, but yourself it internally, and, and it's going to translate into peace. Like, we all would just want to be have less perturbation, right? And we, we all want to have this coarse appreciation of beauty, and beauty doesn't mean, wow, you look hot, you look fantastic, you're beautiful. Even if you do. It's more... <laughs> That's true, baby. But it's more, like, almost like... I don't want to overemphasize feeling, but it's like a sentiment. It's like beauty can be a sentiment. Yes. And they can, even if you weren't born with what the world perceives as beauty, mm. you can like just emanate beauty yeah. as a person. Mm. And I don't know, that's just, it's like an aura or yeah. something that you can't put words to. And it's and, a decision. And it is a decision. It is yeah. a decision that you yeah. can decide one day to maybe yeah. uh, become a gentleman or a gentlewoman. And I think this is important mm -hmm. in a time where we are losing these uh, old fashioned ideas. So mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, for the posterity, we mm -hmm. discuss, I don't know how many, 45 minutes around this idea. And uh, I think, I hope it will give you uh, some ideas or maybe it would have been at least thought provoking, I hope. Thank in you. some proposal that I make. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, darling, for this beautiful discussion. Oh, thank you. It was a real treat. Yeah, and uh, we give you an appointment to the next episode of Sotorial Talks. We look at this camera and we okay. say cheese, everybody. Cheers. cheers. Thank you. Be good to others, please. Bye-bye.